Let's see. So you would just start with letter A, Shelly. All right, so we'll call to order at 6.47 p.m. Yes, ma'am. And we do have a quorum present. Um, let's see. Citizens Forum, was there anybody that asked to speak? So Alice, yeah, so we'll just wait for Alice to respond. Uh, no, ma'am, there is no one signed up to speak. All right. Can everybody see the chat box down there? Yeah. Um, when it says City of Joshua to everyone, that's going to be Alice. Great. Okay. All right. I had, All right, to, borrow, I I had to borrow her, her camera, so she's not on, she's not on here uh, audi audibly uh, this evening. So we'll just have to wor or work with chat for, with her, so. All right, item C is discuss, consider, and take action on approving the minutes from the August 20, 2020 meeting. Are there any questions on that? No, I, I make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. I second. All right. I'll oppose, uh, so you would say, sorry, where? you'd say, I have a motion and a second. Oh, I have a motion and a second to um, approve the minutes from the August 20, 2020 um, meeting. All in favor, say aye. 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 Great. Yeah, and just just uh, the note that Alice, because we're on video, make sure we everybody we we see everybody's hands. Yeah, and we did. You you guys did that. So just just as a okay. as we continue to go through this meeting tonight. Thank you. All right. Next is to review the year to date financial statements as of August 31, 2020. I will say on this a little bit as I was just kind of giving you a precursor just a little bit ago. Some of the some of the uh, uh, imbalances, I guess we'll call them that, in terms of the year to date, the adopted budget and the year to date numbers. We've actually been talking about that last couple of months, and the amended budget will kind of rearrange some of that stuff and get those things up to date. Um, and so, but I'd still be I'd still be happy to entertain any questions you guys have about that. And of course, I already spoke to uh, uh, the sales tax numbers that came in today. So. Are there any questions here? Josh, were there any major changes to the uh, budget? Um, like I was saying, we um, a lot of them. So, in the uh, in terms of uh, our expenditures, right? So we had, um, if you could look at page uh, three. Uh, well, there's not a whole lot of detail there. Let me let me look at page four uh, is the, the detail on some of the expenditures. Um, some of our uh, 5860 is an account that actually has, it's a, there's a sub account in there. It's, it's not showing it here as 0 0.01, but we actually have a sub account in that same um, um, account number. So we have Joshua Station Development. And because of the way it does it in, in, the, in the, the software, it actually lists it actually lists Joshua Station Utilities, which is 0.01 first, um, and so in the adopted budget, I did not segregate those out. But when we actually uh, when we actually uh, account for the expenditures during the year, because we want to kind of keep those separated, um, I have we actually account for those uh, independently of each other. So um, when we look at the budget detail. Okay, you'll see that you'll see that actually uh, spelled that a little bit um, segregated out in terms of the amended budget uh, versus and then the the adopted proposed slash adopted. I'm gonna be presumptuous here, but the the proposed slash adopted budget for next year. So, David, some of the some of the um, overages in terms of expenditures that maybe we were uh, maybe we under budgeted for when it came to utilities and whatnot. We're, we're, um, we're accounting for those in the amended budget. We've kind of talked about those in the past that are in the past couple of meetings. But other right. than those things, there haven't been anything, um, there has been no uh, major changes in terms of expenditures uh, over the last two or three months that we were not already aware of. Right. So any then, other questions on the financial statements before we move on to the budget?
All right, so item E is to discuss, consider, and take action on the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget amendment. Yeah, so this is, uh, Shelly, this is, uh, and David, kind of this dovetails with the question you just asked. Uh, so the only real major change um, when, it count, when it comes to the budget is we were, um, again, about 5% over. Uh, we're actually a, a, a tick higher than that, uh, but pretty much on the nose. Uh, when I drafted this versus what the numbers came into today, that 421, 430 is just about where we landed with our final numbers today. And as I always like to remind everybody when it comes to sales tax, we're two months in the rears. So September numbers are July sales tax, right? So we always have to keep in mind in terms of the cyclical nature of the economy. Uh, but that's, we account for uh, uh, modified accrual basis of accounting. We account for um, revenues when we receive them. So we don't post them back to July. We post them as of this month. And then next month will be the first fiscal year, you know, the month of the fiscal year. So uh, revenues were about 5% higher um, in terms of the adopted, the amended versus the adopted budget. And the only real difference is we, because of COVID, uh, honestly, and some things we did not do in terms of uh, some, some uh, training, some uh, um, kind of a statewide economic development meetings and that sort, just like every other department, obviously training and travel, those budgets were almost non-existent uh, since the majority of the year was we've been spending in COVID season. Uh, so on the economic development side, that number is, is I brought that down for the amended budget. Uh, of course, that was offset by the paving improvements we did downtown uh, to facilitate that and that that that, uh, that capital outlay. Okay, so uh, that's the only major difference. And so it shows a five five percent. The amended budget is uh, shows a five percent increase in revenues, but a seven percent increase uh, over uh, originally adopted expenditures um, with the ending fund balance a little bit, um, frankly almost literally due to that 23,000 that we did in capital outlay. That's really, uh, when it comes to a ending fund balance, that is the difference between what we adopted versus where we're gonna end. Uh, so, and, and we'll still end up at a relatively healthy of around 300,000 in your fund balance for the amended budget. So I'll entertain any questions or if you guys have any comments you guys want to uh, share or exchange when it comes to the uh, amended? I don't have any questions. I don't have any. I don't have any. Nope. I guess you can pat yourself on the back though, Josh. You did do a good job. <laughs> well, I, you know, I just put the numbers together. At the end of the day, it's, you know, our, our, in, our independent boards, the council, you know, they give direction and I just kind of put that stuff that they, you guys say in motion. And obviously like we talked about, and we're actually going to talk about it here in a minute when it comes to <clears throat> the proposed slash adopted budget, when it comes to projects, if you remember that, that 23,000 in capital outlay, we kind of did after the fact, right? Um, it's one of the things that we probably would have done it anyway. The next go around, uh, you know, like I've already told uh, Mike Peacock, who's, who's not on this, not, this evening, but, uh, and Miranda who couldn't join us this evening, when we go forward with some of these agreements for capital improvements in terms of uh, uh, commercial development, that sort of thing, we're gonna do this. You know, it, it wasn't wrong, it's cause it should've just been done in a different sequence. Like we talked about when you guys first uh, initially considered that, that, that capital outlay. So going forward, you guys are gonna be considering this well before, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the work is done. Uh, as a matter of fact, we actually are meeting tomorrow uh, for some additional uh, development downtown that you guys are probably going to be in, involved in, or at least asked to be involved in. And of course, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but but uh, ultimately, I, you know, it's a uh, I advise, I advise you guys and you guys make decisions. And so I put the numbers where you guys tell me to, honestly. So, uh, but I appreciate it, David, and, and you guys deserve a lot of credit as well. So is there any approval that's needed on the amended budget? Because it does sound to take action on the budget amendment. Yes, ma'am. So uh, uh, technically speaking, and this is the first time, not the first time, but maybe for a couple of us here, uh, whenever we, uh, because technically we have expended more, we, we anticipate expending more than what was originally adopted. 
uh, we'll need to amend the budget because otherwise I don't have authorization to spend what we've right. spent, honestly. So yeah, the amendment will, will uh, require a, a motion and a vote. So we need a motion and a second to accept the amended budget then. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I motion to accept the amended budget. I second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept the amended 2019-2020 um, amended budget. All in favor, please raise your hand. All right. Motion carries. Second. Next is to discuss, consider, and take action on the fiscal year 2020-2021 proposed budget. Okay, uh, so there's not gonna be a whole lot of difference here between uh, uh, the numbers um, and the proposed budget you guys reviewed and, and, and advised on last month. And these numbers, I will say there is a big change uh, in terms of our uh, transfers out to the CIP fund, and we'll talk about those here in a minute. But what I just want to uh, talk about, you know, uh, uh, we're, we're, we are projected to end the year and then obviously begin the fiscal year with about a $300,000 fund balance. Uh, we have been keeping kind of a really steady uh, 300 to 325 fund balance uh, over the last few years. And so this is consistent with that. If you remember, uh, going back to the proposed budget uh, that we looked at, uh, you guys actually retired some debt this year. You know, one of our, one, the only other note you guys had other than the, the land in Joshua Station, we retired this year, which freed up a bunch of cash flow for you guys. Uh, and so in the proposed budget, uh, we actually had the adopted budget, uh, if you remember, of, uh, of $150,000 you guys were contributing to the CIP fund to facilitate the public improvements uh, in, in Joshua Station. Um, of course, that was a year ago, right? And so, uh, as you can imagine, and even as we uh, uh, talked about last month, uh, cost estimates always have to be con consistently updated, engineering uh, what's called uh, uh, estimated cost of construction, okay? And that came from Pacheco Coke. Uh, when I got their update, this was post the last meeting, so I didn't have the numbers uh, when I submitted the proposed budget from last time, but there was an increase, as you, you might imagine, from a year later. And so um, there is a little bit of a, uh, uh, a global, when it comes to the city, a global fund balance challenge that I had to meet. Okay, so uh, in the general fund, in the general fund uh, specifically, the city has a fund balance policy. And what we try to do there it's, it's, not a, it's not a hard and fast rule. And actually in the policy, it says it's the goal of the city. And we're gonna, we are going to have about, or at least 25% of our maintenance and operation revenue uh, expenditures funded in our reserves. And basically what that means is we have about three months of the bills paid, okay? If, if, if no revenue came in, we would have about three months uh, if we had uh, of, of uh, uh, a quarter of the year uh, of revenue set aside to be able to pay the bills and still get stuff done. So it's kind of what the fund balance policy says. It's a, it's a goal of 25%. And so uh, the funds that we have been setting aside in the general fund uh, in Joshua Station specifically are funded by the TIF district. You know, and hopefully you guys remember, uh, we've, we've talked about the TIF district a few times over the last year. Um, but the TIF district is set, it includes Joshua Station obviously, Property taxes are paid into that by both the city and the county, okay? Those funds, the property tax revenue from uh, those properties within that area go into a segregated and restricted fund, okay? So it's a part of the general fund, fund balance, but it's, it's a restricted cash account. So I can only use, we, I say I, but we can only use uh, those funds specifically in the TIF because that's what they're for. And it's only for public improvements in the TIF. So uh, we have about 600, a little over $600,000 in that account. Now, uh, those funds are in the general fund fund balance, okay, which is about a third uh, uh, or a third to about 40% of my fund balance in the general fund. So when it was all said and done, um, we have a little bit more in revenue when it comes to our ending fund balance. 
uh, the fund balance policy precluded me from using any more general fund revenues above the TIF funds that are already segregated. So I, I have 600 grand um, for the public improvements when it comes to Joshua Station. When we all, when it's all said and done, the cost estimate for um, uh, the updated cost estimate was $1.8 million, okay, for the public, all the stuff, all the pavement, the loaded left turn, everything that goes into this. So you guys actually don't see this in your budget, but the council will on Thursday night when they look at the global budget is those funds are actually set aside and earmarked for that project. And that's going to be a combination of those, those funds from uh, the restricted funds from the TIF, uh, your, um, the 150,000 you guys put in this year, and then the proposed slash adopted 300,000 that you guys I'm proposing to, to put in this next year, plus the segregated funds and maybe a contingency there and the general fund may have to kick in a little bit more. Well, I, I don't see that happening, but there is a contingency in there. So what's all said and done, the, the, the TIF restricted funds and the top A um, contribution to CIP funds those developments, the, the public improvements in that development. So that is the major difference from the proposed budget to this proposed slash adopted budget that you're looking at tonight is a doubling of uh, what uh, I was asking you guys to do in terms of, of uh, transferring to the CIP. Now, when that's all said and done, so we, so we would be dipping into fund reserves a little bit, right, than we initially anticipated. Uh, to a tune of about 65 grand uh, net uh, when it came down to it uh, above what the proposed budget was. Now, um, we've kind of talked about this. It kind of sounds like a, obviously sounds like a big number. We had already kind of planned on 150, so it's another 150. Uh, the, uh, but the fund balance, I believe, uh, is going to be easily sustainable. Um, and it also, as I kind of hinted to a little bit earlier, it also gives you guys a a relatively uh, healthy cash flow to look at some other projects that may come up during the year, specifically for downtown. So, uh, which I will most likely be bringing to you within the next quarter or so. So that is the biggest change from the, uh, the proposed slash adopted to the proposed that you looked at last, last month. So I'll be, uh, but other than that, we're actually dropping our, our M and O, right? Our M and O expenditures, uh, by about a third of what we are, what we are, what we adopted last year. And obviously some of that is going to be because we cannot anticipate or we're anticipating certainly the first quarter of the year, probably the first half of the year, there are going to be conferences and meetings and kind of those training opportunities that we have as staff. So we have shrunk down or cut that budget quite a bit. And that also is helping fund those CIP uh, transfers for the development in Joshua station. So that was kind of a, a fire hydrant uh, worth of information. So I'll, I'll be quiet now and, and let you guys ask any questions that you might have. So without going into a lot of detail right now, as far as potential projects and stuff for downtown, how much consideration is being given to you know, still waiting on what the decision's going to be as far as the overpass underpass. Right, so we have, uh, there is a, let me look at my calendar here. I'm gonna look on my phone calendar just because I can't look at, I've got two screens already, I need a third one. Um, there is, let me see uh, where that's at. We do have, So there was a discussion, hold on, let me see. I'm <laughs> getting my uh, bearings here. So both JSUD, uh, which has a, a long-term capital plan for downtown, some of the business owners downtown are kind of ready, excuse me, are kind of ready to go. Uh, they've been kind of waiting uh, and they're just like, look, we gotta, we gotta get going. Um, and we can't really wait on TechStock too much longer. And if we build this and if and when TechStock comes through, then we'll, we'll kind of deal with that bridge when we get to it. Now, we did have a call from uh, uh, the engineering firm that's working on the underpass uh, project. Uh, we have a, we're trying to get a, 
everybody in the same room like this, okay? Everybody in the same room, all the different players and constituencies are, are the kind of the, the agencies involved that are all going to have some input on this. Um, and it's – there is a – the environmental report is what we're actually waiting on to be finalized. There's a Schedule F, okay, that has some data that uh, uh, we've actually submitted from the city, has submitted to the, the state, uh, that the engineers, Kimberly Horn, have actually submitted some more data. Because when they went in, and I think we may have talked about this, when they went into the initial environmental, there was a, there was a historical asset. It's this one house right over here uh, on the corner here that nobody knew was a historical asset because it doesn't look like one. <laughs> Uh, but that kind of put a kink in everything. So the the all preferred alternative um, that everyone kind of assumed was going to be happening kind of got put on the back burner. So uh, now we're looking at uh, an alternative F, which is uh, going right down Main Street or right down 12th Street, right through Main Street. And uh, so what we're trying to do is um, get them back on track in terms of the preferred route. So this, there's some data on, that they want to collect. And then the next step of that is a second public meeting. Who knows how that's going to work now in the age of COVID. Uh, but uh, they anticipate having that as soon as November. So uh, we're still looking at probably a mid-2021 um, before construction even gets started. Uh, and so in light of that, um, both, like I say, both utilities – uh, in terms of JSUD, and then the property owners downtown are just ready to get started. So, and some of the projects that I'm kind of referring to, most of those are going to be uh, parking facilities. Okay, like we've like we've done is facilitating that. Now we did uh, in the new zoning uh, ordinance update, we did change some of those regulations as it pertains to downtown because the original or the the, uh, the the previous zoning ordinance kind of let people off the hook when it came to providing parking. Uh, when it came to downtown, we actually have changed that to where the city's not on the hook for all that stuff anymore. So it's more of a uh, cost sharing aspect going in. And that's the meeting tomorrow morning with one of the property owners downtown is a brainstorming session on what that might look like going forward because it's been different than what we've been, we've had in the past. Uh, but a lot of that is going to be going forward over the, over the next six to eight months, kind of regardless of what TxDOT says. And then uh, uh, these property owners are kind of I guess, willing to go forward with some of those improvements and just double text dot if and when they actually, you know, kind of get on the ball. So that's a, it's really more of a hypothetical scenario situation uh, because we just don't have anything concrete from text dot at this point, other than right. we're just, they're just still trying to gather data. Okay. You said construction would be mid 2021 at the earliest. Yeah, that I'm speculating. That's, I don't have any, Anything from TechSoft that says that, I'm just basing okay. that off of where they're at in the environmental review um, and um, where they, when they said we might have the, the second public meeting. Okay. All right, any other questions regarding the proposed budget? All right. So we will um, entertain a motion and second to accept the proposed budget. I'll make a motion to accept the proposed budget. I second it. Okay, we have a motion and second to accept the proposed 2020-2021 proposed budget. All in favor, let's raise your hand. Okay. Um, item G, future agenda items. Request by directors to be on the next agenda. Thank you, Alice. Okay, and if there's nothing, then we will adjourn at 7 11. Thank you, guys. Tell Glenn we adjourned on time. <laughs> well, <tell me> <laughs> Absolutely. You guys Good have a great job, Thank you. <laughs>